CBC Radio Morning Show, Friday, November 8th, 2013. You're about to listen to Anthony Germain, the host, play a tape from uh, John Furlong and Christopher Higdon from yesterday, and Anthony interviews me. This happened live in the studio this morning. Here goes. 28-year-old Christopher Higdon is trying to raise money for a sex change operation. Chris used to be Crystal. He's making the transition to become a man. And the thing is, MCP isn't doing enough to help him, he says. And John Furlong spoke to Christopher yesterday on Radio Noon. The best way I can I can explain it is that I'm, I'm not who I'm supposed to be on the outside. It doesn't match the inside. Uh, my, my outside has all female genitalia, female... Uh, it, I got breast, I, you know, I need that to match who I feel I am on the inside, and it doesn't right now, oh. and it's, it's heart-wrenching every time I think about it. Can you get the surgery here in Newfoundland? I cannot, unless MCP was deciding to approve funding for it. And they will only approve funding if? If you go to Toronto, to the Clark Institute, to receive a second diagnosis from the one I've received already in Newfoundland. They want a second second opinion from a doctor that's qualified when we do have the doctors here that are of the same qualifications. So They don't recognize the doctors here. Okay, so why don't you do that then? Why don't you wait? It's two years of going back and forth to Toronto. It would actually cost me about the same. That was Christopher Higdon uh, being interviewed yesterday by John Furlong on Radio Noon. Jennifer McCreeth is a trans activist who knows what Christopher Higdon is going through, and Jennifer joins me now in uh, the studio. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Anthony. So when you heard uh, Christopher Higdon's story yesterday with John Furlong, uh, what, what was your reaction? Well, sadly, uh, I've actually heard many stories uh, very similar to Christopher's, uh, which is quite similar to my own story, quite frankly. Um, I've been a well-known uh, activist as well as an out trans person, and I've gone out of my way to perhaps raise as much awareness as I can right. towards trans issues. And, and for people who don't know, um, you're basically doing the mirror image of what Christopher is doing, right? Crystal has become Christopher, and you have become Jennifer. Yes. Um, Christopher went from female to male. I went from male to female. Uh, in, in your instance, uh, you, you said it was similar. Did, did MCP um, assist you? and pay for your surgery? They did not. Um, the policy is a rather complex document and it's about 20 years old and in my opinion is 20 years out of date. Essentially they there are certain things they will cover um, only if the patient is approved by CAMH, Center for Addiction and Mental Health, which is a uh, psychiatric institute in Toronto, Ontario. Mm -hmm. Back in the 70s they were kind of the guru for at the crazy. time, what they felt was a mental illness. Uh, I see. In more recent times, global experts have taken note that it's not a mental illness, but it's a physiological condition. Um, the policies just haven't caught up with the times yet. So in your case, if MCP, did you end up paying this, paying for this yourself? I did. Um, <coughs> the, uh, now, there's, there's more than just having uh, bottom surgery, as we refer to it. Uh, as Christopher talked about, yeah. top surgery is quite commonly requ required for uh, female to males. Yeah. Um, in my case, I spent, I think the bill was approximately $20,000 on the bottom surgery alone, and there's additional costs associated with the whole transition process. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of traveling involved, uh, a lot of um, hormone medications. And but in your case, uh, Jennifer, if you had chosen to go to Toronto, would MCP have picked up the tab? Not necessarily. Um, Again, we're, we're talking about, now this was 2008 when I went through the process. Well, that's six years ago. Which is, years ago. yeah, still fairly recent. Uh, CAMH has undergone some changes, but uh, even as recent as 2008, there were horror stories about how they were considering us uh, mentally ill freaks and they wanted to perform bizarre, inappropriate, uh, degrading experiments on us to prove their theories that we are all sexual fetishists. So I was actually advised, Jennifer, uh, Based on the way you're presenting, um, you would not necessarily be a good candidate to go there. They will probably decline you anyway. Mm -hmm. Your best bet, and this is coming from doctors, uh, to go go through the pros protocol on my own. There's a body known as the World Professional Association for Transgender Health. Um, they're recognized in uh, many parts of the world, and they've got membership of uh, physicians from 
all, literally all over the world. And right. they, they've got, they've put out policies, they've put out assessment protocol uh, that basically determine who can do who can do the assessment, how the assessments are done, mm -hmm. and it, it's quite clear in their text that you don't, it's not a specialty type of thing. Right. Um, the right. competencies are basically to have a psychiatrist and a, a physician like a family doctor. To make an assessment. But uh, there's a contention that I think you and Christopher both make, which is that the expertise exists here, and that is sufficient, and yet the clinical chief of mental health and addictions at Eastern Health has been asked by the department to determine if there is enough local expertise. Um, what do you think about that? I mean, do you know yeah. enough about the medical side of this to actually say that there's enough expertise here? Um, well, I would defer to the experts of the world. And uh, I guess an aside, I exchanged emails with uh, the Minister of Health earlier this year, uh, Ms. Susan Sullivan. She indicated that, uh, now this goes back to January, that she put the onus on doctors. If doctors here feel that they're qualified to assess trans people and provide recommendation that they could contact the assistant director of physician services. Mm -hmm. Now, I guess my question, is this assistant director qualified to make those decisions? I would openly ask anyone here to defer to the policies of this world organization that has all the experts. Uh, us trying to determine what's best for ourselves might not be suitable. Let's go to what the global standards are right. and map it up against them. But I would assume that when uh, when they're asked to actually make these assessments, there's uh, there's probably a process that involves some kind of peer review and there has to be some standards for making an assessment like this, wouldn't there? Yeah. I'm trying, I'm trying to figure out what's really sure. going on here. On the one hand, I'm sort of hearing, uh, you know, if we want to change our gender, we have to go to Toronto. And uh, the province is saying, you know, they're under certain circumstances, we'll do this. In Christopher's case, we want a second opinion. I mean, what's really going on here? Is it go to Toronto because we don't want to deal with this, or what's 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 really happening here? My hunch would be that it's the former. We don't want to deal with this. It's a lot easier to pass the buck on to someone else. There's an organization that's been around for 40 years. It's so much easier to pass the buck, but uh, I think I'm living proof. My doctors here in Newfoundland have been very excellent uh, with with conforming to these global norms. Mm -hmm. They've walked me through the process, both from a physical and a psychological perspective. Uh, I've We've conformed with the guidelines and, and gone through all the checks and balances, and uh, I'm doing just fine. Is it also possible, though, Jennifer, that in a province with a population of half a million people that you know, from a from a dollars and cents point of view, even even though I guess in a perfect world it'd be better for people who want to go through a gender transformation to have it done here close to home, that the demand just isn't there. It's just easier to say, okay, for those people that that do end up getting a diagnosis, it makes much more sense to send them to Toronto. Perhaps that's their argument. Um, bottom line, any doctor can do this. Uh, well, you know, know what I'm getting at is that there, I know somebody's listening, saying, you know what, uh, my health, my tax dollars. There's a lot of healthcare problems, and just because this guy thinks he's a girl and this girl thinks he's a guy, sorry, you should pay for it yourself. And that's uh, perhaps a, a, a fair opinion for people to raise. Again, I would defer to what's medically necessary and what's not. I think it should be up to the doctors to make those decisions, not necessarily the politicians or the average Joe. Yeah, and, and to be clear and to be fair and balanced on this, MCP does have policies, at least on paper, which indicate that once you have a recognized diagnosis, and who knows, in Christopher's case, if a second opinion reinforces the first opinion, then Christopher shouldn't have any problems, should he? Actually, my understanding of the policy is that top surgery is not covered under any circumstance. Now, this is based on a 2009. The top surgery being the yeah, breasts. Breast yeah, breast reduction. Yeah. My understanding is the only thing that's covered would be the bottom surgery. So, top surgery, you're out of luck no matter where you go. Right. And from that perspective, I can sympathize and understand why Chris is doing the fundraising thing. Anything else you want to add to this? Because I always find this a, it's a difficult issue because I have to confess I'm ignorant. You know, I don't really, like a lot of people, I don't really know very much about it. And I always find when this issue comes up a certain level of discomfort. I think any time you're dealing with a taboo topic, uh, it, it takes a lot of courage for people to say, to admit that they're not familiar with the situation and to say, I admit it, I don't know much about this, I want to learn. And I think ultimately this is... It's not just about transitioning, it's, it's the social side of this as well. And uh, yesterday, for example, just in the, amazingly enough, coincidentally, the uh, Minister of Justice, Darren King, announced that he was going to add gender identity and gender expression to the Human Rights Act, something that myself and many other trans people have been asking for. And a bit ironic, though, isn't it, that we're having this discussion at the same time that that's put in there? 
Perhaps so, and uh, I guess a third irony, may or maybe not so, uh, November 20th is uh, International Transgender Day of Remembrance, where we, uh, I guess, commemorate uh, people who have lost their lives in the trans community due to murder or suicide. So it's the timing seems to be appropriate to talk about trans issues. And I see, actually, on that point, you put something on Twitter this morning when a horrific crime was some, some guy lighting uh, a transgender person on fire, basically her clothing. Yes, and uh, you, you see sad stories like this every day um, all over the world, and the excuses of, I'm just afraid, or whatever, I mean, it just doesn't fly It's an anymore. act of cruelty. Absolutely. Uh, Jennifer, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, and uh, every time I do, I feel I learn just a little bit more, so uh, thanks a lot for coming in. Glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Jennifer McCreef lives here in St. John's, uh, and she frequently comments on transgender issues. What do you think of what you've just heard, and your sense of what the province's policies are on this, and particularly when a doctor determines that somebody... Um, is basically a man trapped in a woman's body or vice versa and they need these kinds of procedures to fulfill their potentials as human beings because they're afflicted with an illness and policies do allow for uh, health health dollars to be spent to address these needs. What are your thoughts? 5765259 or does it make sense? Listen, if you have this, you got to go to Toronto. Toll free 1-866-576-5259.